This video is sponsored by HarperDB. HarperDB is a distributed database built for developers of any skill level. It has an easy to use REST API and supports NoSQL and SQL, including joins. The Management Studio allows you to install, design, cluster, and manage your databases without having to write a single line of code. HarperDB has an awesome React hook on NPM and leverages standard interfaces so you can use your favorite reporting and analysis tools. You can register for a free instance of HarperDB Cloud or use the promo code CODEVOLUTION for free credits at the link mentioned in the description. Hey guys, welcome to this video on the Angular learning path in 2020. A few weeks ago, I published the React learning path and the modern JavaScript learning path. After that, I got requests to make one for Angular as well, so I figured I would do a short and concise learning path for Angular. I have to tell this right away though, that this path is my personal opinion and is by no means an exhaustive list of what you should be learning in Angular. However, Having taught Angular in this very channel with more than a million views with positive feedback overall, I have a decent idea to suggest a learning path for you to follow. Before we begin, let me tell you that you need to be familiar with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and at least the basics of TypeScript to get started with Angular. All right, let's begin. I've broken down this path into three sections. Let's begin with the first section, which is the fundamentals of Angular. This section is for you if you are a complete beginner to Angular. You need to start with the Angular CLI. Angular CLI is a command line interface tool that you can use to create a brand new Angular project with just one command in your terminal. Apart from generating projects, you will also learn that Angular CLI can generate application code and perform a variety of development tasks such as testing, bundling, and deployment. Once you have a new project that you can run, you then get started with some technical concepts in Angular. You'll start with ng modules. ng modules are the basic building blocks of Angular applications. Some modules come packaged with the library, and then there are user defined modules. It is a way to isolate and run your code as silos, which then interact with other modules to work as an application. An Angular app always has at least one root module that enables kickstarting and typically one or more feature modules. For example, if you're building an e-commerce application, you would have one feature module for users, one feature module for products, one feature module for checkout, and so on. So basically, ng modules provide a compilation context for components, which brings us to our next concept. Angular has a component-based architecture. So every UI element you see in the browser is defined by a component. A component is nothing but a class that controls the logic, a template that controls the view, and some metadata that ties together the class and the template. Most of your work in Angular applications are writing components. The next few concepts to learn revolve around the template syntax. A template is a simple HTML with some Angular magic. So you need to learn the syntax for the code you write in a template file. Start with interpolation and property data binding where the data flow is from a component class to the component template, or from the source to the view. Next, you learn about event binding. Event binding allows you to listen for certain events such as keystrokes, mouse movements, clicks, and touches. You'll understand how to run or execute some code based on an event. Event binding involves data flow from the view to the source. Next is the concept of two-way binding, which gives your application a way to share data between a component class and its template. This is the banana in a box syntax, 
which is widely used in writing forms in Angular. Next, you should learn about the pipe operator, which lets you transform and display data. For example, displaying a string as a currency value, formatting date, and so on. Finally, you should become familiar with template reference variables, which are often a reference to the DOM element within a template. Once you're familiar with the template syntax, you'll then move on to directives. You could say directives are custom HTML elements that can be used in an Angular app. There are three kinds of directives in Angular. The first one is a component, which we already talked about. In Angular, you include each component as a custom HTML tag that gets rendered in the browser. Next, we have structural directives. These directives change the DOM layout by adding and removing DOM elements. We have ng-if and ng-switch to conditionally render elements, and we have ng-4 to render a list of elements. Lastly, we have attribute directives that change the appearance or behavior of an element, component, or another directive. There are a few built-in directives that brings us to our next concept, component styling. In component styling, we have class binding and style binding. For adding and removing classes, we use the ng class built-in directive, and for adding styles, we have the ng style built-in directive. Both are examples of attribute directives. We then move on to an understanding of component interaction in Angular. Since our entire app is built out of components nested at various levels, we must understand how to pass around data from one component to the other. There are several ways by which components communicate, but for a beginner, you should focus on parent and child component interaction, and in particular, the input and output decorators. Input is used to pass data from parent to child, and output allows the child to emit an event to its parent with which the parent can then run some code. The last bit to learn about in the fundamental section is the component lifecycle methods. You'll understand the different phases of a component and how to hook into those phases using the lifecycle hooks. It is also in these hooks that you will execute code many of the times. For example, making an API GET request or running some code based on changes to the component. Understanding the lifecycle methods is crucial for any Angular developer. All right, now that we have a good path of the fundamental topics, let's move on to the second section, which covers the advanced topics. Here, the first concept to learn about would be services. When you build an application, you will eventually come across values or functions that need to be shared throughout your app. That is when we make use of a service. A service is a class with a specific purpose. For example, providing some constant values or fetching a list of products from an API. Services can also depend on other services. You will learn about dependency injection in Angular and how to provide a service to components that need it. You can provide services at a module level or an individual component level based on your requirement. Next, you're going to learn about observables. This is one of the concepts that we all tend to struggle to understand when we get started. Observables are the recommended technique for event handling, async programming, and also handling multiple values in Angular. You could say observables are an alternate to promises that you might be more aware of. With observables, you need to understand how to create, subscribe, execute, and finally dispose of them. You will also learn about operators that allow complex asynchronous code to be easily composed in a declarative manner. Speaking of asynchronous, let's move on to the next topic, which is the HTTP client. Angular, being a framework, provides a simplified HTTP client API, which is the HTTP client service. With the HTTP client, you can make GET, 
post, put, and delete requests, and even have typed responses, which are a big help in avoiding errors. You will also learn how to handle errors from an API and about the HTTP interceptor. For example, if you have to attach a bearer token for every request, adding an interceptor is the way to go about it. The next thing to learn about is forms. Angular provides two different approaches to working with forms in your application. The first approach is what is called as template-driven forms. In this approach, you rely on the directives in the template to create and modify your form model. They are suited for simple forms like login and registration. Coming to the technical concepts in a template-driven form, you will first encounter the forms module. This is the module that provides the necessary directives to work with the template-driven approach. The first directive is the ng form directive, which attaches on the form HTML tag and tracks the overall form value and validation status. Next, we have the ng model directive, which you specify to every form field to track its value and validation state. Sometimes you might want to group several fields under one label, for example, an address field which encompasses the street name, city name, and pin code. In such scenarios, you can make use of the ng model group directive. Once you get a hang of data binding, you can then move to understand how to track the state and validity of your entire form. When you're able to do that, you then proceed with adding validation and displaying error messages. Finally, you can make use of the ng submit output property on a form tag to be able to submit the form you've created. My recommendation is that if you're new to forms in Angular, get started with the template driven approach. Once you get a decent idea of how forms work, you can then move on to the second approach, which is the reactive forms approach. Unlike the template driven approach, which abstracts quite a few things to make it simpler, reactive forms provide more direct and explicit access to the forms model. This approach also better scales and is more robust in the sense that you have better reusability and is testable. If you're building an application that is forms heavy with a lot of complex logic, reactive forms should be your choice. And just like the first approach, reactive forms also have a few technical concepts to get familiar with. You'll start with the reactive forms module that provides you with the necessary directives. To create a single field, we use the form control directive. And for a group of fields, we use the form group directive. You'll then learn about set value and patch value methods that let you programmatically modify either the entire form model values or only a portion of the form model values. The next bit you'll come across is the form builder service. When you get started, you'll be creating form controls and form control groups manually, which becomes repetitive when dealing with a lot of forms. The form builder service provides convenient methods for generating those form controls. Once your form is up and running, your next step is to add validation. You can make use of built-in validator functions or even build your own custom validation rules. You'll then learn about the form array directive, which lets you work with an array of values. This will help you add dynamic form controls to your form. For example, adding multiple phone numbers or multiple addresses if the user wants to. Finally, you'll submit the form with the ng submit output property. So this is about forms in Angular. The next topic to learn is routing. Since single page applications have just the one HTML file, it is important to split your app into features and render only the relevant feature for the user. To achieve that, we need routing implemented in the app. Routing allows you to display specific views of your application depending on the URL path. To add this functionality, you will first need to import the router module in your application. 
Then you're going to learn how to configure the different routes for the app. Next, you'll make use of the router outlet directive that dynamically loads a component based on the URL path. To be able to navigate to the different routes from the UI, you'll need to learn about the router link directive. Once you've understood the basics of routing, you will then learn how to configure wildcard routes, which allow you to add 404 pages, and also learn how to redirect routes. When working with routes, you'll often come across scenarios where the content is dynamic based on what the user has previously selected. In such cases, you'll need to work with route parameters. You'll also learn about optional route parameters while you're on the same topic. As your application grows more complex, you may want to create routes that are relative to a component other than your root component. So you'll end up learning about nested routes, also called child routes. After that, we have relative paths that allow you to define paths that are relative to the current URL segment. You will also learn about a performance optimization technique, which is lazy loading. By configuring your router to lazy load modules, Angular will only load modules as needed rather than loading all modules when the app launches. Finally, you learn about route guards which prevent unauthorized users from accessing certain routes. For example, allow users to view pages only if they're logged in. Once you're done with routing, you can finish the advanced section by learning a bit about animations in Angular. Now that you're through with the fundamentals and the advanced topics, you can focus on a few things in the Angular ecosystem. For state management, you can use ngrx. If you want to use a UI component library, you can make use of Angular material. For SSR, you can take a look at Angular Universal. For unit testing, you can learn about Jasmine and Karma. And for end-to-end -end testing, you can learn about Protractor. Last but not the least, you can learn about internationalization and accessibility with Angular. When you have a good understanding of the different concepts in Angular, try building an application to cement your knowledge. But this is pretty much my take on the Angular learning path in 2020. For me, this big picture is what I would have liked to have when starting with Angular. Hopefully you like it as well. Thank you guys for watching. And if you found the video useful, please leave a like and share the video with your friends and colleagues.